Today's section is about key features of a quadratic function. So this is how I figure out what a parent function looks like, um, a parent quadratic function. And then you can memorize this. You'll see it so many times it won't be like I have to sit and actually memorize it. Okay, because you can always just plug it in if you forget. All right, so here is the equation for the parent function. And I'm going to plug in these intervals to see, to see what I get. I plug in negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4. Negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1. 0, 0 squared is 0. 1, 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. Okay, so now I'm going to plot these points of the parent function. Negative 2, 4. Negative 1, 1. 0, 0, 1. Okay, so this shape is called a parabola, and we will always get a parabola if we have a quadratic function. And we know we have a quadratic function if we see the largest exponent is a 2. Okay, so you, a parent function, I mean, a quadratic function will either look like this, or it can be upside down like that. It will never be sideways because that is not a function, it won't pass the vertical line test. So it's either gonna be this way or this way. And sometimes they're skinnier and sometimes they're moved to the left or up or down or reflected. But that's pretty much what a quadratic function is going to look like. It's gonna have the shape of a parabola, okay? So the shape is a parabola. Now there's some pro points that we need to know or some parts of this parabola that we need to know. And one very important part is the vertex. The vertex is this point right here and it is where the parabola like goes down, goes down, see how it's starting to go back up? So this point right here would be the vertex. And if it was going this way, then this point right here would be the vertex. So it's either the lowest point of the parabola or the highest point, depending on which way the parabola is opening. Okay, so this is the parent function. I know we've done lots of transformations before where we slid them left, right, up, down. Today, we're gonna talk about what A does to the parent function, okay? Now, let me just make sure I don't forget this step. Okay, the shape is a parabola. I talked to you about the vertex. There is an axis of symmetry on every parabola. They are always very symmetrical. So if I take this parabola and I fold it over, right, I fold it over this line right here, then that is the axis of symmetry. And most of you guys know what, what an axis of symmetry is. And you would say that x equals zero because on the x-axis, this is the zero and the line goes like this. This is where x equals zero. So every parabola, when I ask for what is the axis of symmetry, it's gonna be x equals something, all right? Because that's a line. We can't just say it's zero. We have to say x equals zero. It's that entire line. Okay, so let's talk about how a affects the parent function. So if I just had to draw a small sketch right here, I would say, okay, this is the parent function. I don't mean for it to look like a v, I mean for it to look like a u. Okay, so if that's the parent function, that would be this one right here. This would, that would be f of x. All right, so I'm going to change, an, or I'm going to put a 2, a coefficient of 2. So if the value of a is 2, what's going to happen is, if this is the parent function, it's going to get skinnier. Just think of it like a bigger slope, right? It's steeper, okay? So it's getting twice as skinny, so it's going to look kind of more like that. I didn't mean, you know, for it to be doubled up like that, but, okay, so that would be g of x. All right, so g of x is going to be narrower than the parent function. Okay, this is the parent function. This function, g of x, is going to be narrow. It's going to be skinnier. It's going to be drawn in from the parent function. This slope is getting, is, you know, like rise one, run two kind of thing. If you thought of it like a linear function would go out more this way. Well, that's the same thing. This is, is going to make the parent function wider. This is going to come out more like this. And that's like h of x. So a lot of, you know, times kids hate that because they're like, no, wait, I want it to get skinnier. So if the number is bigger, if a is bigger, it's getting skinnier. And if a is smaller, it's you know, compressing and it's getting wider, okay? All right, so let's talk about what's happening here. Well, this looks exactly like the parent function, except it has a negative in front of it. 
So that just means it gets reflected. All right, and that's I of X. So now it flips over. So if you see a negative in front of X squared, you know it's gonna be going this way, okay? Now let's talk about the domain and range. So domain is what numbers I can put in, or like if I look on the X, if I looked all the way down here and eventually went up, yes, I would see F of X. I would bump into G of X. I would bump into H of X. I would bump into I of X. Another way to look at it is what can I put in, what values can I put in for X? Well, in all of these functions, I can put in negative numbers. There's nothing that says I can't put in negative numbers. I can put in decimals. I can put in every number I can think of. It, it, I mean, I might not get a nice answer, but I can put it in. So for f of x, g of x, h of x, and i of x, my domain for all of them is all real numbers. Now, when we talk about the range, it's a little different. Let's look at Let's look at f of x. f of x is up here. Well, I can see that no part of it, because this is going to extend, like there's arrows here, this is f of x only is not going to be down here. It is only up here. All right, so I will never get a negative answer. Well, let me see. If I put a 10 in here, I'm going to I'm gonna get 100. What if I put a negative 10? I'm going to get 100. So I'm never. it's never going to spit out a negative answer. So the range for f of x and you can see, well, wait a second, all of these, g of, s, g of x, f of x, and h of x are all up here. They are all going to be going up, 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 and um, they aren't going to be down here at all. So all of their ranges are x is greater than, I mean, sorry, not x, y. y is greater than 0, all right, because that y value is going to be up here. And then for i of x, you can see it's the opposite. It's down here. It's never going to be up there, no matter what I put in. If I look here, if I put a negative 10 in, negative 10 squared is 100, but then I have to tack on that negative, it still gets me negative 100. So for i of x, the range is y is less than zero because it's always gonna be down here in this negative zone or it might touch the zero, okay? One other, um, oh, okay, so what happened up here? Sorry, it reflected. It didn't get wider or narrower though, okay? So if I had something like maybe negative one half x squared, you would say it reflected and it got wider, okay? All right, now let's look at this bottom part where it talks about over what interval is, and I gave you a new f of x, increasing or decreasing. Well you should be able to figure it out just by looking at here, okay? But sometimes if you can't, you can look at a table and sometimes they'll just give you a table, so why not use it? All right, so I wanna talk about what this means. If I have a, in your mind, if I say, what is the parent function? You should already kind of be able to draw a little sketch of that, right? This is the parent function, it looks something like that. Well, if I tell you that f of x is 4x squared, what did we say that does to the parent function? It makes it four times skinnier. So we're gonna say that f of x, we don't have to be perfect on this part, f of x is gonna look something like this, right? Okay. So where is it increasing and where is it decreasing? Well, I know sometimes we like to think that it's going up here and it's going up here, but remember we always read a graph from left to right. So we're actually starting here and we see it's decreasing, 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 decreasing until it gets to the vertex and now it starts increasing, increasing, and increasing. So according to this picture, right, it is decreasing when x is decreasing over here at this part, because this is where it's going down. It's decreasing where x is less than zero, and it's increasing where x is greater than zero. It's increasing over here where x is bigger than zero. Now, let's say we have a function table to look at. Well, we're gonna go ahead and practice filling that in. So I have the function here. If you can't picture this, if you draw a blank and you're you know, taking a test and you're like, oh, I can't remember what this looks like, we can always draw a little sketch of it. Plug negative two in. Negative two squared is four. Four times four is 16. 
negative one squared is one times four is four, zero squared is zero times four, one squared is one times four, two squared is four times four is 16. Okay, so let's say I didn't wanna graph it and I just wanted to look at this table. Well, you could do the same thing. It's these numbers, first of all, my, um, my X values are increasing. So now I'm looking at my Y's to compare. Well, they are going down, decreasing, 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 right until X gets to zero. Once X gets to zero, I notice they start going up and up and up and up. So you would have the same answer, right? Because this is the same information. This is just a table and this is a graph. It is decreasing until X gets to zero. And then once X gets to zero, now it's increasing. All right, hopefully that helps you out for today. Have a good day.